Oh gosh, it's going to be so hard. I actually can't. I can't do this. <laughs> oh. First of all, by the time I finish this video, I probably won't be seeing anything because I'm literally sad against the light. Maybe I should put my glasses on, but I feel like it, it looks weird. If I put my glasses on, I'm talking to people. Also, I feel like glasses don't suit me, but I really love glasses, so I'm going to wear them regardless. Um, lol, this is me being anxious. That's why I'm rambling because this video is very. Oh, sweet lord, this is gonna make me so vulnerable. And I don't like being vulnerable. I mean, who does, right? Can I even hear? I feel like I'm whispering. Oh my god, this is gonna be. <sighs> Anyways, let me see if this will help. I feel like if I wear glasses, like, I'm not personal. Because, like, you guys can't see my eyes. Right? But then I also need it because I look in it to see after I finish this video. Oh, sweet lord, help me. I don't, I don't think I can do this. I feel like if I don't do it today, especially after what just happened, I don't think I'll do it again. I don't even know why I'm being dramatic. This video is a long overdue. Um, when I was wanted to do it, something came. Something came. See, the English is not even English, and this is the sign I should stop it. <laughs> but if I don't do this video, I'm gonna be in trouble with my father in heaven. And. I'm trying to be obedient. Do I put the glasses on or don't? Because I legit can see, I actually can see Jack. <laughs> um, anyways. Hi hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Excuse the glasses, but I literally cannot see. See, this video is so unprepared. Like, even my hair is not even hairing. Like, I've not laid my edges. I've not done nothing. <sighs> but yeah, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. My name is Sarah, Sarah Hannah. Here on YouTube, and I create faith-based content and lifestyle. Um, so I'm outside the park because it's sunny. Like this is a miracle. In the UK, it's sunny at times. We are blessed by the Lord, and made a way for today to be sunny. So I was feeling a bit mm, at home, even though I had a great week. I had an amazing week. I had two amazing days at um, conference. <sighs> I don't want to talk about that. That's different story for a different time. Um, but you know how the devil is, you know, he tries to to do rubbish and make you feel some type of way. So literally, I spent the whole day at home, most of my morning in bed, doing nothing. Literally, scrolling on my phone, as always. And, you know, I read my Bible and whatnot, and then went back straight to scro scrolling on my phone and whatever. Oh my gosh, also, my voice is like this because the two days that I had, Thursday and Friday, I was screaming on top of my lungs for two days consecutive. So my voice is still recovering. So if I sound weird, that's the reason why. Anyway, so I'm gonna try and make this short because I'm in the public. I'm in the public. I'm in public and people are gonna be walking about so you're gonna be hearing people and it's a bit awkward anyways um so i'm here to talk about something that's very sensitive to me very very sensitive some people that are close to me don't even know about it that's how sensitive this is and some people know because of one or two reasons they had to know um so i have a skin condition I have a skin condition that I've had, I don't know for how many years at this point, I think since I was eight, even more, I don't know. Let me just exaggerate and say I've been having this skin, skin condition for 20 years. I'm being extra at this point, but I think more or less 18 to 20 years, that's how long I've been suffering with this, con this skin condition. Um, the skin condition is called oh my gosh i can't speak y'all i actually can't speak and it's the skin condition is called hydrocellinitis superativa i'm gonna put it down because i'm probably not even pronouncing it properly but um it affects different parts of the body i'm just really gonna simplify this um because i'm not medical and i don't know the right um terminologies and whatnot but basically um um the way um, this condition affects my body is by um, 
I have like lumps like um what's it called boils and it can affect different different parts of the body but the major parts of the body that um, this condition affects are your armpits your underarms um your bum yep yep your bum your groin some people also have it on their face and it can also affect um your breast like in the middle of a breast if you're a woman um i think other person people have it on their face as i said neck face and one of, people have a different position of their but different places of their body um when i first had my first boil not mine because it's not mine when i first experienced a boil um they thought i was a cyst and i was still in italy i don't remember what year of school i was just so that i can even tell you guys how old i was since i had this condition i don't know i, I don't remember um, so the time I was a cyst, so I had an operation. They went to open my skin and open the cyst and let the pus come out because they actually thought it was um, a cyst. Not knowing that it wasn't a cyst, but it's a chronic skin condition. Chronic means it's always there. It's never gonna go. There's no um, condition. Uh, sorry, there's no medication that will carry. I've read though that some people say that after they've gone past or through menopause, it stops. But imagine having it so then like i'm still very young menopause is by the grace of god extremely far from me so um, yeah anyways this is what the condition is so it's like literally boils or cysts that have pus in it so they when you have a flare-up your skin will have different boils big ones full of pus and it normally explodes on its own and then the pus come out but before you get to the point that it was put on its own you go through excruciating pain when i say excruciating i mean excruciating i can't sleep i can't sit i can't lie down i can't do anything and it makes my body feverish this is so great people are going past <laughs> goodness gracious I, I said i made my body feverish well it makes me feel feverish so like i'll be cold like i literally have as if i have a fever and i'm already slow in doing things but when i i have the flare-ups i'm even more slower because i'm in a lot of pain i can't lift up my arms i can't reach to things i can't even walk properly depending on where the flare-up is i can't wear certain clothes like if you know me like things like this i wear when i'm alone i don't wear it in public and if i'm wearing well not in public but i don't wear it with people around and if i'm wearing it with people around like i'll wear something on top uh which at times results may look like an anti but it is what it is i'm trying i'm not trying to let people know that i have something going on i'm not trying to let people see something that is actually nasty to see so like i'm always covering myself or even if i'm not like i'm i make sure that i'm not lifting my hands unnecessary um even when i take pictures like i'm trying to position myself like if i'm taking pictures that i'm not wearing something that's covering covering um i would um make sure that nothing is shown and i'll li literally look at the pictures so many times and i'm like okay i think somebody can see and i'll just not post it i'll just not do anything with it or try even to like edit the picture in order for that thing for my skin not to show like even when i don't have flare-ups my skin is not smooth like my skin is like not 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 like everybody else's skin my skin is still very bumpy you can still see the bumps just that they're not painful they're not big as when i had the flare-ups so i've lived with this for a long time and it's caused me a lot of pain a lot of tears i've had oh i've had so many operations one of them was this year in january after suffering for a week straight i'm also very stubborn in the sun because i was like i'm not gonna go to the hospital because obviously i've had depression in the past i know how the healing process is so i was like i'm just gonna affirm it i'm just gonna take um painkillers here and there just to you know but i was i was oh when i said i was suffering i was suffering like i hadn't had a flare-up that painful you know because at times i do have flare-ups but they're not painful and i can manage it but even without taking medication i just you know be doing yeah, yeah, here and there but like it's not like that painful for me to take medication but this one it went I don't even know like it was the pain was extreme that even painkillers were not doing it i was taking ibuprofen i was taking paracetamol i literally combined it so them i know i'm not supposed to do that but at times you gotta do what you gotta do in it so i was combining both of them and it was not helping i couldn't sleep and i was still going to work because i'm also very some way i'm thinking that if i don't go to work something will happen so i had to go to work even if i'm suffering <sighs> very silly of me 
please don't do that take care of yourself um if you're sick just stay home the company is not gonna collapse if you're not there if if you, you leave the job they're gonna replace you like within a split of a second so yeah and anyway, so in january i was oh january was horrible i was the pain was a lot so i was like you know what i think i'm gonna have to go to the hospital so i went to a a and e and then you know how the nhs is it was long blah 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 and they said oh, oh we will have to operate you but we can't do it today i said okay what can i do i ain't got no options oh my gosh i'm already 10 minutes in oh gosh this is long um and they're like okay come back the next day i come back the next day and they were like oh yeah we can't operate you today either because whatever i can't remember the reasons i had to come back the following day at this point it was monday because i went in on saturday and i didn't get operated until monday so i go in monday they operate me obviously they put me to sleep because that's how painful it is like local anesthesia would would have not worked and to be honest all the other operations i had were all general anesthesia except from the very first one i had in italy um anyways uh, so yeah i woke up from the anesthesia yo i was crying my eyes out I was crying like I was crying and shaking my eyes were still closed because I could hear them trying to wake me up by calling my name Sarah 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 I was gone but as soon as like I gained consciousness consciousness conscious consciousness whatever um my eyes were not open but I was crying like I was literally crying and shaking like a leaf and I, I could remember hearing in one of the nurses saying is she upset or she's in pain and my dad's like bro sister I'm in pain why would I be crying for upset? I mean, literally, pain. So they gave me morphine. The first dose, like, gave me morphine through the I, no IVF, through the the cannula, IVF, you know, through the cannula. And then that didn't work. I was still crying. I was still shaking. So they gave me another dose. Nothing. That thing did not do anything. The third dose, and I was still in the theater, like outside the theater, because you know we had the recovery room. I had I hadn't even been taken to the ward. And then you know after the third dose of morphine, that's when the pain started to come down. I said, Lord, I've had operations before. I remember crying the the other ones, but this one, nah. The pain was the pain was paining me. <laughs> the pain was really paining me. And it was doing me. Anyways, I got to the word, body of blood, they literally gave me morphine until I left because it was just too much. And I didn't realize, I don't know how silly of me, but I didn't realize that morphine make you high. I don't, I think I knew, but I didn't expect it to be, like, I would be high by the morphine, you know what I mean? Because, like, my manager came to see me and then she was like, yeah, you're high. Because I was literally laughing. I was laughing. I was making noise. I was just talking like I was okay. And then she was like, yeah, you're definitely high. Wait for the morphine to ease out and you'll go back to your normal self. <laughs> I said, wow. Anyways, the that operation, the recovery was the longest recovery ever. And it was even oh my gosh, it was even chaos. So like when they discharged me, they were like, Well the nurse will come home to do your dressing on a daily basis. Tell me why this I never saw the nurse. The nurse never came home. Like the nurse never came to my house. I remember I had to take a bus to go to um working centre the following day because they the um the thingy dressing had to be changed on a daily basis um i was like nah this cannot be me it, i literally had to take myself somewhere to get the thingy changed anyways the recovery process literally lasted i don't know it was the longest i ever had in my life i think it lasted till march i was still visiting like the nurses i got to a point i had to go to my gp and then get the nurses to change it every other day so I was like, come and I had um, what's it called, a post surgery appointment. They were like, um, the nurse, the surgeon that I saw, or the specialist actually wasn't a, a surgeon, a specialist that who looked into this um, condition. They were, he was like, oh, you know, we can put you back on the system. You have to go and see the dermatologist again. I think I'm really jumping, but anyways, I'm gonna. It's gonna make sense by the grace. Like you're gonna put you back on the system, so you're gonna see the dermatologist again, and then we're gonna put your medication again. And then after the medication, when the, the dermatologist said it's okay, we will operate you. And then this operation is meant to stop the condition forever. See me in the hospital room crying. I said, Lord, <laughs> I actually cried because I was so happy. I said, Oh my gosh, can you imagine being free from this bondage, being free from this sickness? Like you guys don't understand the amount of medication i've taken in this life i've taken different type of um antibiotic there's one antibiotic sorry i'm just gonna be a bit traffic there's one antibiotic that was making my period i said no i stopped it i said no 
like no because i had antibiotic that made my my palms and my eyes red and i'm sorry not red yellow that was even last year i remember when i was going to italy and my friend um what's it called um I was complaining that my eyes were yellow and my eyes literally hurt for the entire duration that I was on that medication my eyes was hurting like crazy and I didn't know that was one of the side effects so one day I just at work and I read the leaflet and then I find out that you know that was the side effect I said I'm stopping this I literally called the the, the I don't know who I called but I said go straight to to a &E because your eyes and your your eyes being yellow could be a sign of another infection I think an infection of the liver so they did in the self um what's it called um exams and stuff and then they were like okay no it's not but stop the medication so yeah he would talk this the specialist was like you know we're gonna take you back to medication and once the dermatologist give us it go ahead we operate you and this operation will consist by taking chunks of the skin away right the condition effect and then i'm um, taking skin from another part of your body and then replace it there sorry my voice is my throat is actually hurting a little bit um i was like yeah oh my gosh this is so cool but then i remember asking her will i have killer scar because i already have a killer scar and that was like most likely but would you rather have a killer scar or have I'd rather be in pain i said it's okay let me add the killer scar it's not that deep i mean those killer, killer scars are a bit you know what they are so then it comes to when was it sometime in march i received a call saying that you're gonna be operated on the second of sorry not march april you're gonna be operated on the second of may so like literally in two weeks i said well you people he told me that we're gonna be on medication first not that like medication but i didn't expect it to be this quick and then the guys like yeah we also didn't expect it to be this quick so i was like okay cool i mean i'm gonna be free five days or four days before the operation these people called me and said the operation is cancelled because the nurses are striking i said what <laughs> I was upset. I was extremely upset because I was like, man, I'm finally close to me being healed. And now people are telling me there's been cancer. Up to today, today is the 13th of May. They still haven't called me to reschedule the, the operation. But I think I know why. So, of course, as I said, I've suffered with this condition for a long time. And there's no amount of prayers that I have not prayed. There's no amount of fasting that I have not fasted. There's no amount of hands that have not been laid on this forehead of mine to pray for him. Like, I've seen different pastors. I've seen different, I don't know. Like, the, there have been, like, sessions where I'm in the, in the center of the prayer circle because they're praying for my healing. And it gets discouraging. I was like, God, I myself have prayed for other people and they've gotten their healing. Why am I not being healed? Like, I'm like, God, a lot of people are being healed for diseases that have no cure. And mine has no cure, but like, their diseases are even more um, extreme cases than mine. How come this small thing, God, you have not healed me from? Like, I would get so much discouraged. I remember one time doing floor prayer one morning and a girl came and testified about her being healed from this disease. I was so happy for her. I was literally genuinely happy for her, but then I started crying. I said, God, why not me? I was like, God, why is it not my turn for me to also be healed? Like, why? Like, she has the same skin condition as I have. Why can you heal her? Why can you not heal me? Like in the Bible, we've healed people with leprosy. It's still skin condition. Like you healed people with so all sorts of disease. Like the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. You healed the blind eyes. You healed, I don't know. You healed people that were possessed by demons and whatnot. Why, God, are you not healing me? Like, oh, I've had so many whys. Like even recently, I was in my bed and I was just crying. I wasn't even bent, but I was just crying because I'm like, God, how long will I have to go through this pain? how long like how long like oh I, like now i'm smiling because i don't know because i have to smile because god is good as mercy enjoys forever but there's so many there's been so many days i've been sad you guys understand like this disease like it's not apparent so when people i remember one of my friends when i told him he's like oh but you don't look like someone who's sick i'm like yeah because i ain't sick I'm just, i just have a condition and like I, i've mastered how to manage it in a way that even when I'm in pain, I don't show it. It's when it's, it's only when I have like extreme pain that like I can't hack it. And you see me like maybe like down. You, I'm not talking much. I've isolated myself. But like you know, because I'm used to it, I've mastered that. You know, even when I'm in pain, I'll smile because I gotta smile. Especially like when I'm in public, when I'm in church, I, I don't. I just don't like people seeing me being sad or people being seeing me in pain. So I literally mastered how to look okay. 
but like inside i'm just crying i'm just like god why like people like people are healed from cancer people are healed from hiv people have, have been healed from i don't know what sort of disease but why i haven't been healed and literally i'm like god how long do you want me to pray how long do people to pray for me like even recently it's one week ago one week ago like a week ago two weeks ago i went to see one of one the pastor and he prayed for me like a friend of my mom because my, my mom is also like she's also this type of cause because when i'm in pain she feels the pain um so she's literally calling everybody that she can call to lay hands on me she's she's making me call pastors from nigeria pastors from ghana like she's making me talk to a lot of people that i'm just like you get to the point like you literally seem like i don't have faith but it's like i've heard it all like this pastor will say this this one will say this this doctors herbal doctors will come and tell me drink this i'm literally i'm tired like i remember one medication that i took guys it was as if i was um eating um earth like the ground that that's the color was brown literally like sand that's the word i'm looking for it looked like sand and it tasted awful i was just it's like oh drink it eat it or whatever chew or whatever they said it's like god like look at all this medication that i've been made to take like all this medication that i've been forced to take like why god can't you just heal me like why can't you just do it like at times i literally question god and and I, at times i even feel bad for questioning god like but like god why and literally i've come to realize that god's time is the best he knows when he will heal me i know some people say that oh he might never heal you you might have to you might have to accept the fact that he will never heal you, heal you. and at times i try to accept that fact but in my head i'm just like nah that ain't for me like you know when peter said this is turning my flesh like three times i've prayed for it but god said my grace is sufficient yes god's grace is sufficient in my life but i on until i die yeah until i die i know that god will heal me and if i die god didn't hear me that doesn't mean god is not faithful oh no abraham was promised that his descendants would be like the nation did he ever see it? like the sun sorry the sun did he ever see it? he never saw it but that doesn't mean god wasn't faithful it actually came to pass do you get what i mean like a lot of people were promised things in their bible that didn't actually physically see but that doesn't mean it didn't come to pass they all came to pass every single one of them so like i believe i strongly believe that god will heal me and at times when i go for prayers like even this um conference that when i was literally praying for my healing and you know i was a bit not sad but mm, mm, let's say disappointed i didn't get healed but then it got to the point that i understood that that just wasn't my time i got something else that god wanted me to get at that specific point at that specific con um concept con eh, conference jesus <laughs> that god actually wanted me to get he didn't want me to get my healing there and then but god would do it like at times i literally had to speak to myself you know how the bible says that um david encouraged himself with the lord at times i had to do that myself because it's hard like at times i literally had to tell myself that you know but the bible said that by his stripes we are healed so i my healing will come to pass it might not come to pass when i want it when i go for the all night prayer or when i go for the 31st but i don't know why the first night for me it look like healing service it's like i've called upon myself like i made the first night in my head a healing service so every single time the first come to pass i'm like today is the day to this is the year that i'm gonna be healed at 31st night but who said the 31st night is only for healing <laughs> who said that but um yeah i literally have to encourage myself all the time that you know god's times is the best i was literally talking to my friend the other day and i was telling her you know although i was sad i didn't get my healing that day god gave me peace because i've been going through a lot this past four months like this story from the video but so many challenges so many attacks i'm just like god why i didn't subscribe to this i'm I, I, why hello is it my force to be part of the people who had to go through trials and tribulations but god gave me peace he actually literally gave me peace he actually literally wow he gave me peace my healing wasn't for these two days for like friday and thursday but my healing will come this video is long and i, I know it's not making sense but i'm just here to tell somebody who's going through a hard time that sister right away actually let me come personal i can't see but sister brother wait keep waiting keep praying hannah went to um shiloh shiloh every year praying until god gave her her child keep praying like keep believing and keep praying whatever god has said 
that he would do in, in your life he will do it no matter the circumstances that you're going to no matter the pain that you're going to no matter the hardship you're going to keep praying keep having faith because Bible said that if we have faith like a master seed do you know how master seed small is do you how do you know how the master seed eh english has failed me do you know how small the master seed is is like extremely small i said that if we have faith like a master seed and if you tell the mountain to move the mountain will move so i just want to encourage somebody that no matter how no matter what you're going through no matter the pain whatever disease it is is it cancer is it liver problem is it kidney problem whatever the disease is let's know that god is faithful and he has never filled people in the past he will not start with you he has not filled your grandma or he has not filled your great great grandma do you think he'll start with you he won't god promises a yes and amen we might they might not come to pass when we want them to come pass but they will come to pass so if god said that you're going to receive your healing you are going to receive your healing if god said that you're going to receive that breakthrough you are going to receive that breakthrough if god said that you're going to find a job you are going to find a job whatever god has told you and whatever promise he has promised you like not only the promises in the bible that the promise like that he says specifically to you that, that you've heard they're gonna come to pass they're actually going to come to pass i know this video is not making sense and it's actually quite long but i hope you encourage somebody that god is faithful he will heal you he will deliver you from that demonic attack he will bring you out from that depression he will bring you out from that mental health from that mental health issues like whatever it is he will heal you heal you just keep having faith keep believing in god and he will do it i hope this video makes sense to somebody encourage somebody that no matter what you go through god is there for you god is actually there for you in your lonely times in when you're crying God is there for you. Don't think that God doesn't see your tears. Don't think that God is wicked and he doesn't see the pain that you're going through. He sees it. But he said that at the point of time, I, the Lord, would do it. So rest assured that at the point of time, God will do it. He will deliver you. He will heal you. So, yeah, this is just to tell somebody that keep trusting God keep trusting in this perfect timing and, and to tell myself as well you know it's hard me making this video doesn't doesn't mean that tomorrow one day i will not be crying because i'm in pain i will not be crying because i'm sad that god has not healed me but i will remember though in my tears that god is faithful and he will heal me and restore my body and restore my skin and i'll give my testimony one day i'll be i'll come back here and give my testimony and testify by the goodness of god in my life so yeah i can't see anymore and um yeah i gotta go so i hope this video touches somebody just know that you're not alone in your sufferings um find somebody who you can talk to find somebody who you can pray with i'm blessed to have pastors that whenever i feel some sort some sort of way i just go to them i'll be like lb speak for your girl and they will pray for me so i hope you find that support system but above all just know that your help come from the lord i would say that i lift up my eyes to the hill my help from whence comes my help my help comes my help comes from the lord so just know that your help is coming your deliverance is coming god is there to help you god is there to restore you he's there to bring you out from any situation that you're going through yeah i i gotta go because i feel like at this point i'm talking too much but god god is good <laughs> god is good and his mercy and there is forever so i'm done i believe um if you're interested in this video and you want to know more about everything because i feel like i just spoke here and there just just yeah <laughs> so if you want me to be more specific about this and about how, how I'm dealing with or how I'm I'm managing it. To be honest, I'm managing it. I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> I am managing it by the grace of God because I don't think I'm doing anything that is, yeah. Anyways, I'm talking too much. So yeah, if you want to know more about it, let me know. Let me know what else you would like to see. 
on my channel and yeah this video is gonna be super raw i don't think i'm even gonna edit anything because i don't know anyways okay bye um i hope you like this video comment share subscribe and send it to a friend tell 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 a friend to subscribe and let's grow the family stay blessed and stay beautiful bye <laughs> mm -hmm.